it is official. The Batman is a bona fide hit, incredibly successful. It has made less than the other comparable Batman films, but again, given this is still, people may not believe it, we're in a pandemic and the virus is still affecting a lot of parts of the world, including the U.S. It's a very impressive showing. And even though there's been a minority of critics who really don't like it for both political reasons, they didn't like the tone, they weren't impressed by the third act, so on and so forth, it is mostly gone over very well with critics and fans. Now, I have not seen the film. I want to make that clear. So I'm just going to give a kind of summation of the good and bad parts. So the good parts. I think for the most part, people are saying that Robert was very solid as Batman. It is extremely consistent in having a dark tone and showing Gotham as a very murky underworld. And most of the lead performances are very impressive with Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Colin Farrell as Penguin, Paul Dano as the Riddler, and so on and so forth. There's almost universal praise for the soundtrack. I have yet to see one review that says the soundtrack was bad. And even though we saw a little bit of this in the trailer, apparently a very key action scene involving a car chase is incredible and very well done, although it's not practical. Huge parts, but were CGI. But now in terms of the bad side, some people are saying the riddles in the story were a little weak. They weren't as thought-provoking as people wanted. They did want a harder version of the Batman, because even though this is three hours, there is an R-rated version, but they went with a PG-13 rated version. But hopefully we'll see the unrated version eventually. On top of this, a lot of the people being featured in the trailer are really more cameos. This is really focused on the Riddler, Batman, and Catwoman. So if you're looking forward to Alfred and the Penguin and some of the other key people, they're not in the film that much, which is saying a lot given the length of time. So this is mainly focused on Batman, the Riddler, and Catwoman. Also, there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne. So if you want to see a kind of contrast with Batman and Bruce Wayne, this film will not have that. Bruce Wayne shows up only in a few scenes. That's it. This is basically a Batman film and almost totally about Batman. But Bruce's past and origin do play a key role. And a lot of people are already complaining. The plot is a little too similar to The Dark Knight and even Batman Begins. The problem is that they don't seem to understand or unaware that The Long Halloween inspired Christopher Nolan. And Matt Reeves has made clear The Long Halloween was also being used in this. Not all of it. And I was able to finally read it over the weekend. And you can definitely see little bits and pieces that were utilized. But it doesn't fit perfectly. In The Long Halloween, it is focused on Falcone. And I won't spoil it, but the Catwoman has a certain relationship to Falcone, which is spelled out in the comic book. On top of that, the Riddler as well as the Joker are not major players in The Long Halloween. They do show up. They're not focused on. The focus is on this mystery serial killer called Holiday. And clearly they're using the Riddler to stand in for Holiday. And Holiday does give certain riddles, but they're not very deep. So that may explain why. The Riddler does feel like the other versions, but not completely. Because again, they're using parts of The Long Halloween. Now I would give The Long Halloween a solid 7.5, but it does have a lot of problems. So it's a very strong story, but it was made for a certain version of Batman. But they are keeping the major framework, which is in Long Halloween, Batman has already been the Batman for at least a whole year. So we're dealing with Batman in year two, and that is what is occurring in the Reeves film. We're seeing Batman in year two, and how he's operating Gotham City, and is kind of looked on with suspicion by both criminals and the authorities. But in The Long Halloween, he has a much more comfortable relationship with Gordon, but here it seems that they're a little bit more distant. So if you're still a little puzzled as to why it's not working out for you, and maybe they didn't adapt The Long Halloween as well as they should have. But still, I think The Dark Knight is one of the best films of all time, and that takes huge chunks of The Long Halloween. And now a final major spoiler before we close out. I had noted this a long time ago, and apparently it is being confirmed that Barry Keegan, yes, is the joke. They're not being explicit, but if you're thinking of the unknown Arkham prisoner, that is the Joker. So yes, the Joker is in the film. It's not a huge role. It's more of a cameo. You may not get the Easter egg, but he is there. If you wanted a little bit of the Joker, 
The Batman Does Contain Him. And there we are with The Batman by Matt Reeves. Thank you for listening.